Plot, Blinsight, 2006. Written by Anonymous. Six blind Tibetan teenagers climb the Lhakpuri peak of Mount Everest. Led by seven summit blind mountain climber Eric Wiehenmayer. Voice over off. When you're blind and watching movies, what will you find? A blind superhero whose superpowers are acting like he's not blind. A sighted actor overdramatically touching people's faces. Or maybe the whole joke is that they're bumping into different places. A spectacular. Welcome to Citizen White Cane, the podcast that pushes blind stories to the limit and only turns back when there's no other option. My name is Sky McLeod. I'm Melissa Bakta. And we are talking about blind sight today, not blind sight. I'm, <laughs> I want to be uh, respectful of the automat- automated accent of the computer but it is blind sight um, <laughs> <laughs> um uh, uh, which is a documentary um about a group of tibetan um teenagers teenagers yeah who uh climb a mountain range in the adjacent to mount everest basically like one close to mount everest right they're basically climbing the peak next door yeah yeah um, uh, with some like experienced mountain climbers, uh, led by a blind man who is the first blind person to and maybe still the only blind person. I, I didn't look, look that up, which I could have, but I didn't think of it. Um, to be a blind person who climbed Mount Everest, um, because he did climb actual Mount Everest, and it's, it's yeah, pretty amazing. And the doc, the documentary opens with, uh, shots of of his climb yeah of mount everest and i'm just oh boy he's walking across the crevasse on that tiny little ladder and i'm just so scared and i'm like you want to take all these blind teenagers from tibet and you want to do this with them i know okay. i've done the exact same thing <laughs> like, I, yeah i mean bl- blind people can do we can do anything we want uh and things have to be adapted for us and right. we just have to figure out our own way i'm not going to tell if you're blind and you want to climb mount everest i Far be it from me to be like, oh, you can't do that. Right, right. Doesn't mean it's not terrifying and yeah. people could die. Right, because like obviously fully abled people die climbing Mount Everest mm-hmm. um, loads, all the time. Loads of them. Because yeah. there's a, there's a memorial. This I didn't know this. There's a memorial at the first base camp and it's just all tombstones. Yeah. Well, it's plaques, a memorial. Sorry, memorials. So yeah. it's, it's all memorial plaques of all of these people who have died, who this mountain has claimed. Right. Well, they actually say, I think, like, it's, at one point they say it's like one out of five. I think they say two, 20 out of 100, but I translated that to one out of five. Or so. Like, I was like, oh, my God, that is not good odds that like that many people would die. Oh, yeah. No, you. Um, they, and there's so many things that can kill you. Right. It's just it's insane that hearing hearing Eric and the other guides talk about the death zone, you know, there's the zone between the, sorry, the zone after 21,000 feet, the, the death zone, because you are so high up, your body is starving for oxygen. You can't breathe. You, yeah. you can get altitude sickness. You can get headaches, very severe headaches. Your body just starts right. to shut down. Well, cause like, it's also like you can get very severe headaches, but it's not the kind that you should be pushing through. Cause that could mean you're about to die. Right. 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 <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you want to be aware, you know, cause if you in the normal times just have a headache and you know where it's coming from, you can like wait for it to pass. But it's like, no, you have to be super alert. Cause you could be like, Oh, I have a headache. That's really bad. Now I'm dead terrifying (laughs) right right it's oh my gosh i just was i i was really scared i watched this uh well i mean my nose my nose is always three inches away from my computer but i watched this with (laughs) with my nose three inches away from the screen and my fist clench and i think i looked away several times because i just was so 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 nervous that somebody was just gonna biff it off the side of this mountain yeah no i am glad though that it wasn't about him climbing mount everest yeah i i still can't watch free solo the the documentary about the about the crazy rock climber who uh, well free solos so he climbs without any equipment 
Right. I People are no. like, it's so good. And I'm like, I no. can't watch. I know he survives and I can't watch. I saw Man on Wire and I, that was one oh of the God. most terrifying movie experiences I've ever had in my life. That was so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I am totally with you. I don't like watching that at all. And I think that the fact that a lot of this movie was about the teenagers and their lives made it a lot more palatable oh, because definitely. I do not want to watch them like there was like a couple shots of them being for reals like on the mountain and that was like really stressful and so but a lot of it was like at camp and like you know back in Tibet like or I mean they spend the whole movie there but like but back at the school where the kids come from and we can mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that yeah oh yeah I definitely want to talk about that with you because um so we open in Tibet and we open we meet the 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 school um we meet Miss Sabrina who is a woman from Germany yes. a blind woman from Germany who is running this school in Tibet yes uh, she's the best yeah. she's so amazing oh God, I just wanted to hug her I'm like <laughs> oh my know, God she cares too. she cares so much about her students and she wants them to have normal um, lives where they're fulfilled and they can do yeah. anything they want to do and yeah she's she is incredible. like one of the few people I've seen in real life where I'm like oh I truly want to be you <laughs> like <laughs> oh I know I was like you are a role model I mean she <laughs> she figured out how to do all of the outdoor activities that, you know in, in growing up that nobody else would teach her that she knew how to do. I mean, there's footage of her downhill skiing. Yeah, and she talks kind of about, like, how people... You kind of just have to, like... Actually, I think both of them talk about... Because we see both Eric and um, Sabria, I think, because she doesn't Sabrina. have an Sabrina. No, it no? doesn't have an N. Oh, okay, then it is Sabria. I guess I, I, I heard Sabrina, and just that's what I thought I heard, but okay. Um, I Sabria. think it's, like... It's Sabria. I think it is, like pronounce a lot like Sabrina but it's spelled S-A-B-R-I-Y-E-A I think oh it's I have trouble I was like trying to figure out how to pronounce it and I don't think I fully got it so We're but it's s- it sounds like Sabrina, Sabrina uh, okay but I think Sabrina is probably right because that's like okay because well, it does sound like Sabrina <laughs> we'll, we'll go to we'll, we'll be safe we'll, we'll yeah go, we'll go with that uh, we apologize but yeah it's yeah yeah, yeah. no it's so, okay Sabrina. um it's she's german we can like we, it's it's fine if we get a german person's name wrong it's not like a <laughs> historically oppressed group um, <laughs> um but yeah but she uh is um yeah goals to be her she has started a um like a school yeah a school mm-hmm. Uh, for Tibetan and Chinese, because it says that she talks about in the beginning about going and like um, to different villages in China and Tibet and um, finding like blind kids that are basically being, um, you know, seen as like burdens on their family. And they talk yeah. a lot about these like cultural things that, that are like, yeah, they're the to be blind in Tibet, at least in, uh, and in China is hard uh, because there's a lot of supersti- superstition, uh, especially in Tibet, which was really surprising. I had no yeah. idea because there's just a lot of really horrible miscommunication and misconceptions and superstitions about being blind. They believe that blind people's eyes are cursed. Right. They, and they, a lot of them were like, you did something wrong in your past life. Right. Like a, right. M- multiple kids talk about that. And it's really sad because they're like little yeah, and how can how can you be expect you know how can you live a wonderful fulfilled life as a blind person? There's just there's just no way. I don't remember the exact word that's thrown around, but it just it sounds mean. It's like yeah, there's some stuff that like there's like one scene, and we can't play any of these clips because they're not in English, so we would have to read all the subtitles. <laughs> so it's easier just to um, you talk about them. But like, there is one clip with a, um, a mom who's just saying stuff that's like so bad. Like, and and the kid is like right there, just like, and it's really hard. Like, because you can tell that this is just like not like you know not seen as anything wrong with saying it's, stuff about yeah, how like it's normal yeah and just how it's a burden and it's like a curse on the family I think it's like kind of those kinds of stuff it's like really 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 sad Mm -hmm. because it's just completely like it's also just one of those things where like this is a self-fulfilling prophecy like if you don't like you know and and obviously this that school like Braille Without Borders which is a school that um Sabia Sabia now now I'm getting self-conscious about it um (laughs) (laughs) um they that she runs um like you can tell that 
giving them an opportunity to do stuff, they like flourish. And then when they don't have any opportunity to do stuff, they are struggling so much. But it's like entirely the perceptions of the adults that have the power over them. Like if adults were giving them the same credit and the same opportunities as sighted kids, they would do just as well. Yeah, like, well, it's 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 that scene at the at the temple in the at, at um, Everest Base Camp when they have their blessings, which is is really moving because everyone who goes through to climb Mount Everest stops at this temple to get blessed by the right. by the monks who are there, and they get blessed and they come out and there's there's the whole crowd of them, which in in this culture like society i mean just to see a crowd of happy blind people That's is cool. so cool and but it's mind-blowing to these people they meet this elderly <laughs> woman so funny yeah they meet this elderly woman who just is crying why are you sad oh because you know you're, you're blind and the, all of you are blind and how you know how can you be happy and 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 the kids kind of i'm totally paraphrasing here but the kids speak up and they're like well, well look at us we're happy can't you we're very, we're very happy. We're we are enjoying ourselves and we're experiencing, you know, all of this and and we're not sad. We we have we have good lives. Yeah, you know. And I'm hoping they changed her mind. <laughs> right. But, well, I mean, I yeah. think those things do over time, and it is like that one. It was yeah, that really stuck with you too because it's just like that's not that far from our experiences. Oh, like totally. we've had like everything those people were saying. I've had people say to me before, and so like because some of them, I'm like, I did not grow up in a household where I was. It was considered that the family was cursed, and like they, I must have done something wrong in a past life to like be such a burden on the family. You know, those that is farther from my experience. But those like everything those people were saying is like stuff yeah. that has definitely well, happened to me. I mean, and it's so. Someone who grew up in a, a fairly religious household. I mean, before you're taught about, you know, Helen Keller and Lewis Braille, if you're even taught about about those people and about all of the other amazing blind folks who've who've uh, done incredible things, you know, you're taught if you read the Bible and everything, you're taught the story of the blind beggar who was healed, and this was just the most miraculous thing to have Jesus heal his eyes because blindness is just the worst. I mean, there's the story about. Um, Saul who became Paul who became one of Jesus' disciples and he converted and believed when he was struck blind in the desert because he uh, he lost his sight and, and, his, and his whole life changed and then you know and then he converted to Christianity again I'm paraphrasing massively but blind to. blindness is something that <laughs> that you don't want it is a punishment yeah that's you, yeah, you're seen as you're seen as less than Right. I mean, my which is like yeah. so such a self fulfilling prophecy. That's like what's so upsetting about it. Like, and I feel like I don't know. It was just in this documentary. It's like so obvious. Anytime you have like two scenarios of like people given any opportunities at all, and it's just like the idea that it's like maybe it's because this kid has absolutely no opportunities to do stuff, and even like the the opportunities that their siblings are having, they're not getting those same opportunities to do stuff. And like if they did, they would do just as well. And if they got the support the adults around them like you do at the blind school then they did so well like and really just got to you know got so many more opportunities and so they rose to those opportunities and it's just like yeah it it, it is really hard to see that and I mean I I was lucky in that I grew up in an atheist household. My grandfather was blind and, like, a rocket scientist like so that was my model of what a blind person is and so like you know, it was a very different upbringing. And so I mean, that's also I've, why. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've never, ever, never, ever by anyone in my family have been told that, oh, you you were cursed or you did something wrong and that's why you're blind or you, you blindness is your punishment. Like I've right. never, I've never, that's never been said to me by my family. But I mean, I've run into mostly religious people on the street. Yeah. Who, who see it. The completely opposite way or people who want to pray over me when I'm trying to get lunch or food at the grocery yeah, store or whatever I mean it's before, just yeah. yeah it's just it is just ridiculous I obviously I cannot compare that to the thing that these that these kids are going through in Tibet it's that's totally different I mean this is a society that has completely ostracized you and given up on you and it's ridiculous because we see these kids at home in their little mountain homes or their their villages and these kids are are gathering food. They're taking right, care they of goats. So they're much cooking, to help out. Yeah, they're cooking over an open fire. I'm like, what? Well, the parents are like, they're cursed and they're, oh, they're a burden on the family. And it's like, I don't know. It seems well, like they're doing a lot to support the family. Look, yeah, look at this kid, like, getting grass for the goat and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, wow. You, yeah, it's hmm. 
it yeah that was just hard to to watch because it's just so it's it's so ridiculous and i don't know it's just one of those things where it's like feels so like this just doesn't need to be happening like but i mean it is kind of it is kind of cool to see the just how much of a difference that like the braille without border school did like given them opportunities because i think always i feel like i know intellectually that really the thing that stops most disabled people from getting to succeed is they were not given any support Mm -hmm. and they were just basically being told that they couldn't succeed from the beginning despite whatever they wanted to do or whatever their you know capabilities were this yeah this school looks like an amazing place i would love well i've always wanted to go to tibet now I know yeah. that this school is here. I would love well, to happening. to visit this school. What? It's <laughs> not anymore. In 2017, it closed. Um, and I was trying oh, to find more information no. on, like, what exactly happened. It seems like uh, Sabia had moved on to other things since then. And I think right. it was being run by other students. Yeah. And they said that at the end of the documentary. But it was in 2017. Like, this movie came out 10 years, I guess, before it closed then. Um, um, yeah, but one of the uh, one of the girls, um, her, her, her name in English translates to happiness, I think. Oh, I forget all the ones what they were translated to. It was some uh, of them I couldn't even read the subtitles to begin no, or the that, titles yeah, to begin. Yeah, that with. was that was really difficult. But yeah, she in because at the end on the end credits it says she stays behind or she stayed and was running the school. Right. She took it over from from Savina, but Right. I yeah, I don't know. Uh that's that's very sad though that the Yeah, apparently closed. like the it was closed by like government authorities and they didn't really give a reason which i've like i wanted to find just like more information on what what that meant at all but i couldn't find anything that was like so i really have no idea what happened or if it was just like because people had moved on or i have no idea but apparently i think um also sabia was not able to renew um uh, visa, so she couldn't be oh, there. Oh, she had at to leave. All. Yeah. yeah. Well, that and the, and China is very strict about that sort of thing. So, right. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, so I have no idea what because this is. Yeah, um, was there? I guess for um, more. I guess I think it's like more than fifteen years that they were doing it. Wow, that's but, incredible. But yeah, it is. But then they had like all these different programs. I was listening to the information on the website because they talk about how it closed. But then they also give a lot of information on all the stuff they achieved. And they have like so many different things that this like the students can do. And um, and they like we see in the movie, some of the students uh, went on to like start massage therapy. Which made me so happy. I was like, oh my God, we've come full circle. I know. (laughs) And they and they now serve cold drinks at their at their massage place. Oh my gosh. (laughs) It was oh yeah. It's just it, it is really it's great to see like just how much I mean because they were, it was different in that it was worse what they had to deal with is worse than what we have to deal with mm-hmm. when it comes to ableism and the fact that they were to some of the things they were able to do I'm like I don't even know if I'd be able to like if oh, like yeah, not no. like that I'm not I'm not able to but well, I don't think yeah. the society would let me do half the stuff they wound up figuring out <laughs> I mean this this whole expedition there's oh well I would never there's do it. no way no no, no way no. I and I and I've had uh, there's a program called Challenge Alaska that was super cool. And they, it's a was a basically an outdoor guided program for the blind. You, okay. you would want to go skiing or hiking or kayaking or do some outdoor activity, and they would pair you with a guide. Oh, and these okay. were really good guides. Would they do it in groups so that you would have no. groups? No. Oh. Well, yes and no. I always got one on one. Okay. But yeah. But would you not like? Would you have a group of guides and blind people, or are you just going with? It, it? was just me and a, and my guide who was oh, sighted. Okay. So that's sad though. You don't get to like bond with other blind people. Yeah, I mean. I did it through a ski camp. My my middle school every every winter uh, during Christmas break they had a ski camp, and it was at Alieska, which is this really beautiful lodge uh, next to Mount Alieska in Girdwood, in um, south south central Alaska. And so every every morning we get on a bus because it was this day camp. We get on a bus and we would go to Alieska and spend the day just you know putzing around. And there was classes in the morning, and then you got to play for the rest of the day nice. so I took the classes in the morning with all the other you know sighted kids or whatever and then I would 
take what I would learn. And, and uh, a couple of times I, I, got, I actually managed to get a guide. And so we actually would, that was when, that was the time when I had the guide with me, we could actually ride the big chairlift up to, obviously I'm not going to the top of the mountain, but we rode, you know, up to where all the other kids are right. and skied down the side of the mountain. That's, I it mean. was super, my first, uh, yeah, my first, uh, my very first downhill skiing class, my instructor was super cool and it was one-on-one. And I'm not sure if he'd worked with blind kids before, but he, he had worked with a lot of kids, so he knew what he was doing. Okay. So he... That's a big difference with that kind of thing. Like that is true. That is true. But I mean, he knew about me, you know, before all of this, and right. he, you know, was like, "Yeah, I'm going to teach you." You know, any of the teachers could have said, "No, we're not going to do it." But this guy didn't. He's like, "Yeah, no, we're going to do it." And he uh, takes beginners. He takes everyone to the top. Okay. Now, and this was at Hilltop. This is not Elieska. So this is like baby, baby, baby compared right, to right. Elieska. But he takes everyone to the top of the mountain, and my mom freaked out. But why? Because she took me all the way to the top of the mountain. And I had never put skis on in my life. Oh, yeah. However, um, we practiced and I'm sure I fell down a bunch of times, but we went at my speed, which was very slow. <laughs> so, That's you know, it fair. took us an hour to get down the mountain, but he never said anything. But he taught me how to stop and move and turn and how to control myself. I enjoy downhill skiing way more than I do cross country skiing. Cross country is fine, but I really enjoy downhill. What's cross country? What's the so difference? So the difference. I mean, obviously, I know what downhill is. Just right, by the right. Name, but. So cross country is usually there is a track, like an actual um, track that's been made in, into the snow that you pop your skis into, oh. and then you. It's the same motion as downhill. So you're, you know, whoosh whoosh, putting. But your, it's there's no there's no hill. Down? That seems hard. Um, you have poles also. It's. It's like running, but with skis. Okay. Are you like, but you're not, or do you put your feet up though? No. You. So then running. You just keep your skis on the ground or on the snow. Would it be more like f- arm muscles though than mm-hmm. running? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, cause you have the poles and you have to use your, your arms, but you use your legs just as much. Really? It's, it's running, but your feet are locked into skis and you never, they, they never leave the ground. Okay. So that feels like just such a different motion than running that I would be yeah, very hard I'm, to translate. Yeah, no, I'm skills. I'm <laughs> trying, I'm trying to give you like something <laughs> mentally that you could latch on to. I would say uh, Google or um, watch some YouTube of cross country. It's really it's really fun and it's it's interesting. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, we but I downhill skied. I downhill skied like everybody else, uh, and I f- probably fell a lot more, but you know. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, that that would be, that's cool to like it to do. I mean, downhill skiing seems, I don't know. I mean, oh, I feel like this, the, this snow would be really hard to deal with. But other than that, it would be pretty fun. I mean, you know, you, you're, you're zipping down some fresh pow pow. No, I'm kidding kidding yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> no but yes yeah I mean the, the, there's different types of snow there's going to be different consistencies it's going to feel different uh fresh powder versus something that's been packed over and been skied on and has gotten icy is going to feel yeah, icy a lot different scarier yeah but I yeah. guess would you be would you fall as much I mean are is well I guess you would still you'd still fall generally but you don't sure. want to like fall onto ice is where you're no, having you, a problem you, you probably don't want to fall onto ice but this is again this is a ski resort so they take good care to make sure that you know the mountain isn't oh, just a giant could be ice trap fun. yeah it's the the mountain climbing for me like um, in this movie like it it's the oxygen the lack of oxygen that makes it just seem like no fuck that I would not do this <laughs> oh and I have uh, experienced uh, walking around and climbing around in high altitude. I'm not a mountain climber, but when we went to Costa Rica, um, we went up in the mountains to visit volcanoes Irasu and Poas, and they are high up there. I mean, we are we are very 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 high. I can't remember exactly how high, but we are high, and it's crazy. It, you can you can walk around and do whatever, but every single breath you take, it just feels like you're not getting enough oxygen right which the, is yeah. truly all of my life like that is what it feels like all of my life so the idea of tr- 
tri- like doubling that is is just not tenable. I right, will right. Not do I mean, that. it's it was it was not easy for me to move to, to for me to move around, and my teachers kept Imagine an eye on me. And they're that like, being your know, whole yeah. life, um, which is my whole life, because I am have mm. asthma where I do struggle to breathe most of the time. I cannot fully breathe. So yeah, so the idea of of yeah being having thin air on top of the fact that I can't breathe generally just feels very bad to me. I mean, I don't know. I think that part of what's what's weird about this movie is you have these blind characters that are, you know, and there's like kind of this discussion about blind people climbing these mountains or Mount Everest, but like just generally doing this. It's it says something about blind people in general. Like and that's I mean, I think we should definitely talk about that. And, you know, I, I don't think I necessarily agree with that at all. But like but I think it's also weird because part of it is like they equate like weakness a lot in the movie with like just having trouble breathing or altitude sickness and it's like that feels just as genetically random you know or just like kind of against someone's control as blindness like the fact that you get altitude sickness doesn't that doesn't make you weak it feels similar to being disabled and that well, you, you mean, just can't you mean as in how they how they would talk about because they would they would get to their camps because they have checkpoints that they have to meet when they're climbing and they'd get to their camps and the, all the adults, the guides, would have a powwow and they would talk about the weaker ones. Right. Yeah. I mean, so everybody's body is different. Right. Exactly. And everybody, yeah. And everybody's body is going to react differently right. to the to the changing uh, in altitude. And it, it was it was hard because I, I went from being elated to incredibly angry sometimes because I'm like, if you cannot push them, if you push harder... They can in die. this case, they're gonna die. Right. Yeah, or it something. Like something really bad could happen. Too high. Right. Like so. You know. So fucking what? Oh, boo hoo! You don't make it to the top of the mountain. Right. Big, big whoop. I but love nobody, how they do but nobody talk dies. about like the difference between Western and Eastern. Yes. Like the, yes. the, the Westerners are so like fixated on top of mountain. I'm like, yes, I would say that in the podcast if you guys weren't talking about it in the movie because that is so true. It's such a fucking Western idea of like you, you start yeah. the top you of the started, mountain. You started this thing and you're going to finish it. Whether you know whether that costs you an arm and a leg or your right. life, you're going to do it. Which is like technically then you're not finishing it, so it's kind of pointless. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, and the cool thing was i mean uh sabina went with them i was not expecting that she was gonna go with them and endure everything that that they did and i i was just kind of amazed i was really proud of her too yeah you know she's like i'm just not you know i'm gonna put myself on the line if i'm asking my kids to put themselves on the line i'm gonna put myself on the line right which i mean i think that that makes perfect sense i think that like and we see how she is just so much more committed to the well-being of the kids and that and, and like yeah, they're like teenagers doing something that's ridiculous that most people don't do in their lives, no matter what. And like, not, well, and not only that, they're, they're talking. The kids are talking about like, well, if, but if we don't make it up the mountain, then th- that proves nothing. Right. That, right. Then Which we're, is just you know, so we, silly. We have to we have to do this because then people will will respect us and will accept us as blind people. And that and they they know that blind people can do anything. Right. And I'm like, the fact is. Every single day that you wa- that you get up and walk around and do just go about your life and do your things at the school and learn, that's an achievement too. Right. Well, and it's also like it's not their responsibility to prove to people that human beings are human beings. Right. Like that should not right. be on them. Like you, I don't yeah. understand you how owe, why that fell on their shoulders. Right. You owe these people nothing. Yeah, you, you. We said we said this all the time at at school. You are enough, right? Yeah, and like, and the point of having like a blind school is, it is not to prove to the rest of the public that blind people are worth are like worth valuing. It's to re give back access in like a good life to people who it's been stolen from them like it's to give you back a life that you deserve that was stolen from you because of the way that the you know the culture is not giving you the same level of opportunities and I think that that is a very you know universal thing too like that it is you know you should never have to prove 
your value and I think that once we ever get and especially with kids who are like if this is if it seems like it's their idea the likelihood that it's because the adults around them are making them feel like that's true is probably a lot higher than anything else like they probably didn't just come up with the idea that like to get you have to get to the top to like be valuable as a human like especially since we see that the adult like that Eric kind of I mean he said he basically says that like that you know they have to get to the top and you can tell that like that must have like rubbed off on the kids because there's no that doesn't actually make any logical sense <laughs> well, and, yeah and I mean and Eric you know Eric has done this before he's not you know right. he's done Mount Everest but he's also climbed uh, Denali he's climbed uh, a bunch of, of mountains all around the world he he knows what he's doing he's an expert you know, right and it's like kind of his thing and he's like a um a trailblazer and so you know that he was the first blind person to do most of this stuff as well so like you know he's definitely coming from it with a lot more like I mean just kind of like velocity of like the intentional stuff like to be someone who's the first to do something I think that really propels you whereas like these are kids that are trying to get different experiences in the world and like find like things that they enjoy and it's not it that that same level of drive that's like this is his whole life is devoted to this is going to be different for kids who are right. already doing a lot of stuff and they're you know already have full right. lives where they're doing other stuff too and that this this isn't like a even the central part of their life necessarily and that's why I, I don't know I don't want, I don't know if we want to if I want to talk about the ending right now I'm just yeah. gonna say that's why I think this documentary ended in the perfect way I was so happy which I do have a clip from the ending when oh, we get good, to it. Oh, good, good, because I, I love the ending. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, this is Sabina's crazy idea. Let's, you know, she found Eric so inspirational. Let's bring him in and, and teach, you know, and teach these kids. And I it was important for these kids to to do something, you know, to do this, to learn, oh, my gosh. I am capable. And having, I can do this. Having role models that are blind, which, you know, I think it's Sabria, I think it is. I don't know. We're just... We're just How about we it. just call her Mrs. S? Mrs. S. Um, Miss, sorry, Miss. She's not married. Miss S. Miss S. Um, <laughs> and Eric are both, like, blind role models of, like, people who are... Both, both of them are blind and both of them are doing really cool stuff and, like, not letting, like, bullshit stuff uh you know in in germany or in the u.s like ha like letting the oppressiveness of ableism stop them from doing this you know the stuff that's important to them and like i do think it's really important like you know even though i never met my grandfather like for me the idea is like blind person rocket scientists were like very closely tied like that is really valuable and i did not become a rocket scientist but that doesn't mean it didn't help me <laughs> to have that like idea and so i think that there is inherent value to getting right. to see these like blind role yeah. models well, and that, I, that in itself is is valuable yeah i mean i never met lewis braille but after learning his my third grade teacher gave me a book actually about about him when i was just learning braille and getting really frustrated <laughs> and she gave me this book and i read it and i devoured it and i learned all about lewis braille and that made learning braille something amazing yeah. and super fun and just this neat skill that I could do. None of the other kids could do it, but I could do it. And to learn right. about the man who created it and why he did it. And Mrs. S also created Braille in Tibet. So <laughs> right. she's another example of someone who created Braille. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that I mean, but I think that that, yeah, that it, it makes you feel more like you have possibilities and yeah, that camaraderie and that feeling of like this is a, a hidden skill that people don't have. Yeah, those are all really valuable things for kids mm -hmm. to have in their life. And so I think those all have inherent value. Yeah. And the idea that the summit is going to be the only thing. It's like they've already gotten a lot of out of these situations. And sometimes it's also, I think, good to step back and be like, the important thing is they get to be adults. Like that's way mm -hmm. that's more important than anything else is that yeah. you get them to adulthood. And as like a teacher, that should always be the main priority. <laughs> um, and you can like I think other stuff is you should be adding other stuff onto it. But like they're not gonna be good adults if they don't if they're dead. <laughs> like right. and so well, like and, their safety I mean, is number one. Yes, absolutely. And I and I think Miss S hundred thousand yeah. percent believes that and and i'm not saying the other people don't either they they do i no one in, on that team would want to see anything happen to these kids and each Definitely kid not. uh each kid has their own guide 
which I thought was brilliant because each guide is like skilled like they're going it was kind of cool because you meet the the guides and the kids and they're going through like each person they're like and uh chef who's a, a doctor he knows all about you know it like, was like, like truly stats. like a heist yeah, movie yeah, yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> just like oh my god please cue the cue, cue the ocean's 11 music this is know, great this is exactly yeah that. it's you know, very funny gina's the fastest climber in yeah. america she knows all about cleats you know yeah it's it's great it's great yeah it's um, pretty fun yeah so you know, I know they're in, you know, I know they're in really good hands. And I can't remember exactly. I think they're maybe halfway up to to where they're trying to, to, to the summit. And there there's a remark made about how everybody is kind of separated. And, and maybe the kids aren't taking this so seriously because they kind of want to be grouped together because, you know, they like to sing. They like to right, be together. Right. They, and that's that was when I had my first inkling. I'm like, uh-oh. The kids want something and the adults want something and those two things aren't the same and Mrs. S is kind of sort of caught in the middle. Well, I I actually didn't read it that way. I saw it as the adults want two different things mm. and and Mrs. S is Mrs. S whatever. Mrs. S, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I always forget which ones are any of them. Um, but uh, is way more like focused on kind of what the kids want whereas the other adults are more focused on kind of their idea of what this should be but it felt like miss says was just like i what matters to me is what matters to the kids like that like being kind of a surrogate for them was kind of her main but because of that the adults did fight in a lot of different scenes like you see them fighting all the time and so i felt like it really was more of a clash between the adults whereas the kids Mm -hmm could have been absent from that because of the documentary nature of it like you but it could also be that they were I mean they also were speaking English to each other right, and like right. they, the kids did speak English but they might not have been as fluent in it to like be part of those discussions mm-hmm. but there was a lot of scenes where the adults are basically fighting about this you know the kind of thing we're talking uh, about they're, now. they're fighting about yeah they're fighting about the weather they're fighting about the the, the kids in, in in their health they're um they're disagreeing uh, about how the procedure is going, that they're going too fast or that we're going too slow. Or, you know, well, and, and with Tashi, I felt so bad for Tashi. I mean, because he's just, uh, what is one of the, what does his guide say? Whooped, I think is the, the word he uses, but he's absolutely whooped. I mean, he's yeah. losing, he's suffering from altitude sickness. He's not coherent. I don't know if he has any, any more like spatial relations, you know, to figure out where he is. Right, and they're bundling him up, and they're you know they're taking care of him and, and everything. And right, but it's hard. But it's really yeah. hard to see that because you're yeah. just like, and the fact that he's kind of being the message because like if they all go down, they have to go down together. Right, right. And Ta- and Tashi's unresponsive because they're like, do you want to do you want to stay? Do you want to go down? Like what what are we doing? But and, and they have to yeah they are communicating to the other guides like what are we gonna do? You know we we're we're three hours from base camp, from advanced base camp. They we can't we can't turn around and. I don't know. Somehow, Tashi finds the strength to he gets he makes it. He's right. the slowest one, but he makes it. And I'm just I'm, I my jaw hit the floor. I couldn't believe it. Well, because I feel like also that just means that like he just had to work harder than the other kids. You know, it is kind of just like I. And that's why the whole weakness thing. I was like, what are you talking about? The kids who are having the most troubles are the ones who are the strongest because they're the ones who are still like if it's easy for you it's easy for you you're not trying like you know the kid who has altitude sickness and can barely walk who's getting up the mountain is obviously the stronger one <laughs> like <laughs> duh and that kind of bothered me I don't know maybe it's just the word weak really hit me for something because it's just like yeah. it felt kind of ableist like it did feel like it was just like it's it's hard though when the when the blind guy who's who climbed Everest is like nope we should just keep going right and Let's then just but then keep that's going. also like there can like I mean maybe this was entirely coming from a place of like having asthma knowing that my body would be really suffering at that time and that it would be a lot harder for me and knowing what it's like to be the disabled person and then I feel like I would feel just like I do when I'm with sighted people in that situation because I'm the one who can't breathe now so even though 
it's oh they all have one of my disabilities they don't have another one you know so i think that that like it still feels exactly the same of like you're being singled out and you're being seen as like pulling the group down Mm -hmm. because of something that is just your body of no control over and you're actually needing to work a lot harder to do the same thing that other people are Mm -hmm. you know maybe doing with a little more ease than you and the idea that that is kind of seen as problem like bad and it's I mean, and I think that sometimes they do have those questions of, like, if they send the yaks down, they will, like, they have to send yaks down to get some of the kids, or or anyone down who's, like, really unable to walk. And then if they don't, if the yaks have to leave, they won't be able to get the the stuff they need to, like, the future base camp. So there are, like, some scenarios where, like, emotion, like, the kind of emotional debates around all this aside, like, there's just a logistical thing of, like, is there a way to get them, you know, what do we do logistically? I'm sure, I'm sure this must have been a a logistics nightmare. Yeah. I mean, just... That was the one time I was like, I don't feel bad for you because there isn't (laughs) a good, there's not a good answer to this. (laughs) Because not only, I mean, you have, you know, a bunch of blind teenagers who... They did train them how to how to climb, you know, they and these are all expert rock rock climbers. So they, they got really good training, you know, but you can have all the training in the world and still make a mistake. But you have all of them plus their guides. And then you have Eric and, and Miss S and the, the four or five yaks that have all their gear, you know, whatever these, you know, the kids probably aren't the fastest walkers and you're also walking over uneven terrain it's covered in rocks and it gets steeper as you go they're gonna move slow like they're kids so slow yeah i mean i think there's also like and and this is this is sometimes a problem and i i was also thinking about myself as like teaching kids to do stuff and like having done s- stuff with adults and then working with kids doing the exact same things and you do just have to change the way that you interact because it's okay that kids can do less you know or that have a little bit less ability to like stay focused or do what the adults are doing in different ways like that's totally normal and fine like and it's not that you should give kids like you know you do want to give them credit and want to like try to set standards that you feel like they can they can meet and like or even just high you can have higher standards than maybe they can meet but then if they don't meet them you have to just be like okay cool Mm -hmm. like I get that you know you you know and sometimes maybe that something's going on and like figuring out what that discrepancy is is going to be helpful for them in general even if they never get to the higher point but it feels like kind of focusing more on the emotional tenor of everything always feels better to me and Mm -hmm. like feels more productive but there was it's hard to do it in this case well and the scary thing about this is because like I I totally get what you're saying about kids and expectations like I get that the scary part about this is is that this is real I mean if you and you have to be you have to be hyper vigilant all of the time because anyone could make a mistake and anyone could die right well that's why I was just like I would my solution to this problem don't do like rock you've convinced me if i ever am like a teacher of blind children we're not going rock climbing we're not we're not doing that uh, it's just like because well, i don't know if there's a good answer to that i don't say rule i don't say rule rock climbing out altogether i mean i re- i went rock climbing at blind camp now granted we went to a rock That's gym cool. and it was all indoors right. and i you took, weren't free soloing? No, God, no. I took a, I took about three steps and was like, mm, this is not for me. So so you I, didn't go because I did that once too. And I was like, oh, I do not like this. This is terrifying. I'm not going to do this. Yeah, I, I mean, I cheered my friends on and I helped belay some people. That was that was pretty cool. I, I enjoy holding onto the rope. That was neat. But I mean, I'm also, you know, I'm also massively out of shape. So this is just not an activity oh, that is made for me. I mean, I walk like 10 miles. I, I many times have walked 10 miles a day pretty consistently and am terrified of doing that and cannot do it and do not have the ability to do it. So I don't know if it's necessarily mm-hmm. that. It's just, it's terrifying. It's a very scary thing to do. I don't understand why yeah. anyone would do it. Yeah. I'm, um, I mean, I'm sure it's fun, but it just seems so terrifying to me. Mm-hmm. I, I'm afraid of heights, though. So I don't know. It's... Like the higher I get, the more I'm like, I don't want to be here. I don't like it's just, yeah, it's I'm not not cut out for it at all. Um, and also altitude sickness, even when they're just hiking normally and it's just they're getting up higher. I'm just like, I couldn't handle that either. Right. And when we get to we, we they all make it to ABC advanced base camp. Yeah. And that's like Eric says that it's 99 percent of their journey is done. And the last thing they have to do is the one percent, which is summit the peak. And this is when. 
they're going to have to trek through the ice and snow because it's mostly been rocky terrain. Right. But when you get to ABC, it's all snow. And so they're going to have to put the crampons on. They're going to get their ice picks out. They're going to get the ladders out, you know, and they have to watch for crevasses and, and everything when they're when they're doing this stage. And they end up sending uh, three of the kids home down the mountain because, oh, God, one of the one of the girls just has she's got it the worst. I mean, she has the worst headache. headache and it just, yeah, they just like have. she's in pain. She's done. Right. And and like because it's so deadly, you just like anytime they're really suffering, you're like, send them back, send them back. It's mm-hmm. fine. It's just fine. Like, they don't want them to die. <laughs> Right, like, right. And she's and before before they actually send her back, she's like, My headache's gone, my headache's gone. And they're like, No, no, no. <laughs> Which we're gonna, I was we're gonna so glad about that. I mean, like, yeah, anytime they were like, because at one point there is like, what, um, what is his name that you said earlier? Tashi. Tashi, who like, um, gets who's like sick, but then like at a certain point they're like, It doesn't seem like it's just like exhaustion more than it is like altitude sickness. And then I was like, Okay, so then he can like recover, like, because it's like, once they're able to pinpoint that, it's just the idea that if they do have any bit of altitude sickness, that it can all they just can die like suddenly. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just I thought that the logic of like he doesn't seem to have altitude sickness, he can, you know if he says he's okay to keep going then that's fine like i was like i agree with that it's just like any time where they could die i'm like right. send but them how home. <laughs> i guess my my red flag is how much of it is he's saying yes i can keep going yes i am fine but on the on the flip side of it is he just saying that because he knows that everyone else wants to get to the top or he wants to get to the top so bad you know he wants to right. do this that he's just like mm, obviously i can just push through all this i mean yeah, I think it was. I think it was probably that everyone else wanted to get to the top. I mean, that would be my best guess. And maybe, I mean, maybe also that he wanted to get to the top mm-hmm. um, himself. Like, but I'm sure that that was 99% of his decision. You know, like that seems like, and it's also like, who knows how much of that is totally his, like, you know, how much of that is true desire and, and how much of it is. But then I'm also, with some things like that, I'm just like, you know, as long as you give them as much space as you can to, like, have them make a decision, and sometimes the decision they make will be, you know, maybe later on they'll be like, oh, I don't know if that was the right decision, but, like, as long as they're safe, you know, part of being a child Mm -hmm. is you can make decisions that are maybe based on the wrong things and then learn from that. So, like, for me, I was just like, as long as they're safe, that's all there is. (laughs) Like, and it's something like that. Just the fact that they're doing this at all is an experience and so as long as you keep them safe i i'm like that's all good like and i feel like it's all positives i don't think they need to get to the top i think the important thing is that they're safe but just them doing it this like thing at all it's like i watch this i'm like i would not do this this is Mm -hmm. too scary for me like you know so i i think that 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 is something in itself and something that they will like i appreciate and i yeah i think that like they don't need to get to the top and the reason why they wanted to so bad was because it was the adults were creating this weird scenario where it meant something to get to the top (laughs) well and i think that's why the ending is so important because the adults especially learn a lesson the kids learn a lesson the kids have been learning a lesson this whole time but and i i think well it's you know it's but, just eric who learns the lesson i mean he, d- he does learn a lesson Sabia, yeah, yeah it's kind of the entire S- sabria I think yeah it's sabria um, yeah whatever sabria is like i i think doesn't really change all that much throughout the movie well she's been not which isn't a bad thing she's just no, correct no, from yes. the beginning <laughs> she's she's the sensible one but she's also the kid's cheerleader right and she's right, the one exactly. who's, she's the one who's not afraid to be like listen i'm gonna pull the plug on this whole thing if my kids are in danger we're yeah. done that was we're a, done i saw so much of myself in her i was just like <laughs> that is a lot yeah. like, that is definitely my teaching so i was yes. just like you check it with the kids you let the kids you know you you are there to keep them safe and everything else is on the kids to figure out and so like the only times like when I'm teaching that I will be the like I've had kids who have run in the middle of the street and I'm like nope this is not a time where I'm gonna let you decide what you're doing this is a time where I'm getting you out of the street (laughs) and that is I don't care if you're super pissed at me now like or like really like 
the entire two next two days you're angry at me for doing this I'm getting you out of the street because that's all that matters then but like from you know but then after I get you out of the street then I'm gonna listen to what you need and be respectful of that and like work with you if we have different needs in a certain scenario which is like I feel like definitely her style as well um but like safety is is needs to be the most important thing and I don't know I feel like part of it was Eric just didn't it was with sighted mountain climbers was what his you know usual crew was so like he has right. just no frame of reference for the like calculations that are going into like taking care of these kids in a dangerous situation like it just feels like you need that and and i think that is why they worked it worked out with them as a team i think that it was like you know their different skills were all necessary in this you know so i think that in the end it worked out and and just the fact that everyone was fighting throughout it i don't think probably did that much harm because they were safe in the end and right you know and they got to do it and so i think it was like it worked out because they had you know they had a doctor they had someone to do rock climbing they had someone to do the kids and was like advocating for the kids and um and her partner also we haven't talked about at all um, oh my gosh yes who's he's, all, who's very sweet and kind of so on the kind. same page as, yeah as her. yeah he's i mean i don't want to be like he's the male version of her because they're different people but he's kind of the male version of her yeah i mean i think they also like because they started the school together i think that you know they probably just had very similar um ideas of what they wanted it to Mm -hmm. be which Mm -hmm. makes sense for a good partnership yeah so uh yeah so they make it they make it to advanced base camp and they decide who is going down and uh they they celebrate and then fight well about oh sorry stop me if i'm forgetting something oh no 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 i just have a clip to show oh my gosh yes yes please um uh, yeah there so i have a clip of them at the um like once they're at the summit that they the the, the quote unquote oh, summit I, that they I go thought, to. I thought I thought that this is the one you'd have. So this is the trip to the ice palace, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, long long you know long ordeal over. They decide that it would be better uh, for the kids if they turn around. We were only fifteen hundred feet from the top of Lac Paris. Uh, we had done ninety nine percent of the journey. We just had 1% to go. We weren't that far, but we were done. For me, I'm a traditional mountain climber. I want to get to the summit, so part of me felt like a failure. But for these kids, I think it was different, and I kind of had to change my perspective. But right. yeah, basically, they uh, they don't make it. They don't they don't summit the peak that they uh, originally set out to to do. So. In uh, as a consolation prize, Eric decides that the, on the last morning they might want to visit the ice palace. Yeah, this was something very special. I mean, the, the kids they were destroying things with their ice axes, but but also they made new things, you know, and and new sounds. There was a big pile of ice which was discovered by the kids and the kids they were jumping on this big pile and they said this is the ice elephant and they were saying Gatschung was the princess of the ice palace and and Gensen was the big king and they had beautiful costumes and and the costumes they looked like silk but they were actually made of ice and snow You could feel everywhere where you put your hand, you could feel glass uh, or ice sculptures. You could feel different things hanging down or coming up. That was the real blind summit. (laughs) I just like that. (laughs) Oh, that's a beautiful clip. And I, watching that for the first time, I was just, and us watching it now, we're just grinning ear to ear because they, the, the blind kids found what made, what they truly wanted, what made that a whole expedition enjoyable because everything is always all about you know staying together and being hyper vigilant but no one stopped you know and even though the kids would sing and everything but no one stopped to really soak up what they were doing and enjoy the scenery and here's this beautiful place where they could move around and touch and feel and listen and taste and imagine and just be kids yeah this is that's it's the perfect metaphor for all of it mm-hmm. just like life yeah. and and 
and that like also that it's okay if you want to have different things that are what makes it fun and joyous for you like if you know it doesn't you just don't have to go to the top when it's more fun below the top right you know? right I, I think the kids are going to find have more much many more fond memories of visiting the ice palace than you know climbing all the way up to the top of Lock Paris and just yay we're right. at the top this is cool it it's well it's like when my friends when we went to the top of the Empire State Building in New York City um we had a good laugh at the after we got down because I, it was my idea. I wanted to go to the top of this building. But to be honest, it, you're higher up and the air is thinner. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you, there's really nothing. And that's I think that's what we were laughing about was we're like, there's really nothing um, about this experience that means much to you as a as someone who can't see. Right. Right. You know, but I mean, for me, it's being from Alaska and going going to New York City and going to the to the top. It for me being high up was the fun part. But, you know, for someone who has no vision, that doesn't matter. And there wasn't really anything, you know, I could feel or touch right. or I've been anything. to the top of many buildings and every single time, like many of the tall buildings, and I'm just like, that's eh, kinda silly as a blind person. It's not <laughs> yeah, really that no, exciting. That's, I'm that's, afraid <laughs> of heights, so at least I'm like, yeah, at least my fear of heights and my blindness kind of <laughs> a little bit cancel each other out in a helpful way here. But like That's that's kind of the same conclusion we came to when we came out of the building. But you know, there were I found other ways to uh, to enjoy myself and again you know this yeah. was this was my idea and I I had fun I really wanted to do this I the, think there's yeah but that's the thing is it's like it's fun to do it and you really don't you just it's more fun when you don't have that much expectations for it mm -hmm. when it's like the joy of going on an adventure like and I don't know I do think for everyone there there is a there is this like bias of destinations or something where it's like getting to a destination feels like in like when you're going there feels valuable and is always 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 a letdown when you've like framed it that way and I think that like the more just everyone in the world can like get less focused on the destinations of like you know and just being so laser focused because you know like you see in the scene like those moments come from the lack of when you're not focusing on the right. destination these this is the first time the well besides when we meet them and they're at the school and we meet them in their families but this is the first time on this entire journey and this entire expedition that they got to be kids yeah and they just got to goof around and experience the world right and i'm not saying that they shouldn't have been you know safe uh, absolutely they should be safe but this is this means so much more right it's so it's wonderful and it's so beautiful i think that like safety um could sh is kind of like problem zero you know <laughs> i think that you just will need to address no matter what but like that is what is important about you know yeah once you've kept the kids safe that's what's important is that they are getting something out of it and and i think that that it's also yeah focusing in on their actual perceptions which I think it is kind of funny because like you associate this like that that dynamic as being something that cited people are like we're gonna get to the top and like and we're not gonna like stop and enjoy the other like tactile experience like you kind of like that I feel like is a narrative that is kind of like the the quintessential narrative and so it is kind of funny to see in this that it is still that all everyone's blind so it's not it isn't necessarily just um the difference between a blind and a sighted person and then you know and I don't know if it's like if you can fully say I mean it is a very American thing so it's probably some of right, it is American right. culture like yeah. making him like that but I mean that's that sounds well very I mean pejorative the, and, and I mean even watching this documentary the 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 rah-rah you know part of me wants to see them make it to the top wants to see all of them make it to the top and stand on the top of the mountain and like put their arms in the air and have that moment <laughs> yeah we accomplished something yeah so i that's I, so funny because i'm I like know. i don't want them to get to the <laughs> i mean well, i want them to like i want them to to work as a team i mean i guess i just am super <laughs> good just in every way but yes <laughs> yeah. but i mean w seeing this the way the way that everything ended it just i was so glad that they never got to the top it just meant it means so much more that they 
they found their own summit. They they did this on their own terms. Right. And, and they're, they're, they're going to go turn around on their own terms and they're going to walk back down. And that, I think, is also maybe like a lesson that both of them had learned, both Eric and, and Miss S had learned to like to kind of, you know, create your own path and and figure out what works for you. And, and maybe it is that just they found two different things and that they're still kind of committed to those. For Eric, it was, you know, he went to Mount Everest. It was like those kinds of pushing the limits and like, but he, the whole time it is more of an assimilation thing. Like he... I don't know. He feels more like he is on the side of assimilation and like just because, you know, only sighted people have done something. The important part is that you prove a blind person can do the exact same thing and not as much that they can do something different. Like, but I think, but both of them, both of the adults do have like saying like blind people should have just as much access to everything like that that is both of their missions like at the heart of it they're both like it just because you're blind should not mean that the world is just forcing you to be hold back what you are capable of doing um and i think that in a way you know so both of them are pushing on those boundaries and it is and i think that that is just inherently valuable and there's really nothing bad i can say about that as an idea and I think that's super important. Right, right. I don't think I don't think there was anybody who was severely in the wrong. I don't disagree with, with anybody in this no, in the, yeah. in the documentary. I my feathers were ruffled a little bit. Right. Because there was disagreement, but nobody I think everybody had uh, has a different way of of doing things. And yeah, you're right. I mean, blind it is so important for blind kids to to see and be mentored by other by other blind folks and to right. see that's why it's was so amazing that Mrs. S, uh, Mrs. S is blind herself and is and is running right. this school, you know, with with her partner who is sighted, but still, that's awesome to yeah. see to see this amazing, incredible woman who's done all of these things, and then to get to meet this super cool guy who's just right. And they both you know, have very everything. commanding personalities, and so it's really nice to see that with like, you know, these kids having very like confident role models who are both blind and and have a very different outlook on the world that like, you know, maybe if it is a spectrum, finding where you fit on the spectrum, there is some value to that. Um, Because I also think that like what Eric did as an individual, like I think that, you know, I was like looking up interviews and every single one is like inspiration, inspiration. And so it's like Mm. there is a problematic nature to the way that those things get covered. But I think like... I th- and I think that his motivation sometimes to prove something to the rest of the world and feeling like these kids needed to prove something I think is I think is wrong. I don't I think it comes from a genuine like a place that I do understand, but I I you know, I personally don't make that same right. distinction, but I do think that like for him, I think it's very him getting to do something that he wanted to do and doing it for its intrinsic value as well as, you know, once you have once you're putting that on the kids I think that's when it gets more complicated and that's when it becomes more problematic but for him to make this choice and to just want to do something you know if if he was just like really didn't want to go to Mount Everest but did it anyway you know but that Mm -hmm. why would that be he decided to do it it's not like Mm -hmm. anyone was forcing him to do it and so I think that that perspective that he has I don't think it's bad like I don't think it's ableist necessarily I think it is yeah, it just is more assimila- assimilationist and it may be because of what he was able to accomplish gave him a perspective that maybe if it had been put more in question, he might have interrogated a little bit more. But I think the fact that he was able to do so much, maybe there wasn't a time where he really had to interrogate like how important is it for like blind people to do these like really specific <laughs> abled i you know ideals uh, well and and we know and western <laughs> you know and, yeah and we know that the one one of the things that miss s wanted for these kids on this trip is to let them know that guess what you're incredibly capable you can do whatever you want whether you succeed or whether you fail you can do whatever you want and right. we know that this trip absolutely changed these kids yeah and there's so much value in failing too like and i think that that's another thing when specifically like when dealing with kids that have less control over their surroundings you know as as kids generally do is you you really want to give them the opportunities to fail in a comfortable 
you know, comfortable, maybe it's not the right word, but like in a safe way, ultimately. Right, because nobody, nobody is going to ridicule them. Right. Well, at least, you know, Miss Miss S and, and her partner aren't, and none of the climbers are. You know, they, yeah, the, the, exactly right. They they have a very comfortable cushion of failure. And it's not even failure. Failure just doesn't feel like even the right word. It's true. I mean, use. as much it's, as I think we need to like demoralize failure, which is probably why I'm, I use it yeah. more cavalierly. These, it's true. Yeah. It's not even failure. These <laughs> like, kids, these kids did not fail. They yeah. no, they didn't get to the to the top of of Lac Paris. They didn't get to the top of, of their mountain. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They didn't get to the top of that mountain, but they did get to the top of their own mountain. Right. They found their own mountain in their in their own way and they did it themselves and they did it and and they stuck to who they are and that yeah it is it just feels it feels better to me that like they and also just I think when you have the adults having such control over the situation I think that there's a lot of value when working with kids to trying to do as much as you can to step back and let them you know choose their own path because i think that if you give them the if you keep giving them tools to make their own decisions and to decide what they want and what they need out of a situation and like for them to me- you know mess up or to do like to not get where they wanted to and to figure out like you know why did that happen was it cuz i put my expectations in an unreasonable place was it that i you know could do something the next time you know like there's but it is just about like giving kids all the tools that they need to be an adult um in an environment where they can mess up a lot more than you know than when you're an adult which i mean you can still mess up a lot when you're an adult i think um but but it's like with being a kid, you want to give them as much opportunity to make big swings and fail, but safely. <laughs> like, that's important. <laughs> but I think that, like, I think that it is kind of hard when they're in such such a rigorous environment. Like, it is difficult to have kids doing that at all. Like, just, and I think that knowing the plot of this movie, for me, I, like, tensed up n- not at all at the fact that they were blind, because that's like, well, of course a blind person could do this, but, like, the fact that they were kids, I was like, oh, gosh, that seems a, like a lot to put on a kid, right, and those right. are not safe scenarios. Like, there's oh, a no. lot that I mean, can go wrong. Oh, that's yeah. really scary. I mean, there's, there's no way my parents would have let me do something like that. And I mean, I'm, I would never have done right, something no, like I would that never, as a kid. I would have never wanted adult. to do that. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Um, <laughs> But I'm wondering, you know, if I mean, it, it's it's up, you know, it's up to the kids. I mean, I'm sure they all could have turned this down and been like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But well, and they were picked too, like, because right, I think right. there was probably some kids that because it was six out of 30, they say at one point got to right. go. Some of them probably were too young or not fit enough to do this. I mean, because you have to be you not only do you have to be the right age, but you have to be physically fit and they had to, to get permission from parents too right, like right. which i imagine that was probably a big hurdle mm-hmm. but um yeah so that that meant that they might have had some like ability to i mean i imagine they must have had some ability to say i don't want to do it then if only six out of 30 went why would you why would you make well, a kid do it well, if someone also, else wanted to yeah no also you don't want to have I think six kids was the perfect amount. Yeah, you because don't want you more than there's that. no way you're gonna shuffle thirty kids up up friggin' Lac Paris. Yeah. It's not going to happen. So yeah, so they they picked they picked six. Right, that was the size of Eric's team. Yeah, and I think that that um, yeah, it's, it's a sound decision. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, it's still though like they're still kids like, and it is still a really hard thing to put a kid through like. Um, and I don't know. I I think there is probably it is still a cool thing to have kids get the opportunities to do this kind of thing. And I do wonder sometimes a little bit if I have just a bias of like my body could not handle that. And so I'm just like, ah, oh, God, they could die. And I'm like maybe more focused on the death part of it than than I need to be. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, they they have a doctor and obviously everyone wanted the kids to be safe like and survive and like that was you know important to the whole group but but it is it's just it's still it's a gamble it's still putting kids in harm's way and that's like not something you can ever do lightly no matter what like yeah it's yeah Yeah. i don't know but But, i mean a mountain a mountain was climbed be it physical or metaphorical and lessons were learned and 
I'm trying to find a different word for this film that isn't inspirational because I hate using inspirational <laughs> with anything having to do with I mean it's not disability. even it's not really inspirational oh I got I got it it's yeah. aspirational not aspirational. inspirational it's aspirational just just Sabria for me was the one who was aspirational she's so she's so cool I, she's amazing I hope she started another blind school in Germany or I hope she well, I hope, she's doing more generalized stuff like working with other people who are not not just blind people, but people who've like suffered any different types of discrimination or that is super cool. And yeah. I wish her the best and everything. And so you know, same with Eric. Um I hope he gets to climb more mountains. Uh, he yeah, the I did look them both up. So <laughs> they have both of those things did happen. Good. <laughs> good. Very, very good. <laughs> Which is I mean, and you can tell because they are just the type of people who you I don't like I didn't I feel like I didn't need to look it up after I saw the movie. I was like, you know that they're still doing stuff. <laughs> like yeah. that's just yeah. who they are as people. Do you feel like it's aspirational in the like the aspect of the who the adults are or is it more just the experience or watching the kids do it or what the kids are able to accomplish watching the kids do it and seeing them and seeing what they what they accomplish and getting to live that through through documentary getting to live that journey with them and yeah i mean am i gonna go out and climb a mountain anytime soon No. no no but it is it is really nice to see lessons that I've learned and I and I opinions and ideas that I've held get reaffirmed you know about blindness and uh, and about the about their situation when they're you know, during the expedition I mean the, the right. ending the ending means so much to me yeah because it's just it's so it's so brilliant and it's so powerful and it's just perfect and I'm I'm so 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 glad and I was I kind of surprised myself because whenever they would talk about canceling, you know, or turning around or going back or whatever, I just felt devastated. I'm like, really? You've come all this way. You've done all this training. Really? And I'm, and then I'm like, well, that's the American in me talking. <laughs> you know, that's that that's that's my Western side. Yeah, I guess I'm going to get my passport taken away at, <laughs> at a certain point with these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's the that's the ugly American talking. And I need to just well, shut up and listen. I, mean, and, no, you know. I don't know. I'm sure I, I'm very negative on it, but I think there's probably some value to it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that it's it's not necessarily all bad. I I I mean, Americans just do a lot. We take a lot more weird risks and do a lot more stuff that seems like people just say is not possible. And that actually, in the lens of disability, has a lot of merit and is really important. Like there, that is it is really important to give people the opportunity to prove that they're more than what is you know society is expecting of them. And 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 so I think that that kind of can come. With the weird American culture yeah, thing it, well, it's, too, it's a it's a duality because I mean you you have the things that you want to prove to, you want to prove to society that you're a capable and awesome disabled person that, and that you can do it, and then you have to, and it's about you know proving to your proving to yourself, but then you have to come to the realization that you don't have to prove anything to nobody, and <laughs> right. that's, that's so it's hard. I mean, I'm still I still struggle with that daily. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. It's true. I mean, I I feel like I'm always very, like, I'm just much more oriented in proving that I have a disability from, like, just my childhood of not being diagnosed and, and feeling like like that is probably where more of the hurt comes and, like, trying to prove that I am who I am, um, which, you know, is probably even less helpful over time. Um, but, um, but I do think that there... Yeah, I think there's this combination of like, I think you have to prove both a lot and and it'd be nice if we didn't have to prove either. Like we do also need to prove that like, just because we need a different kind of help, like everyone gets help. It's just some help is societally sanctioned and some isn't. And like a lot of accommodations are just what society is doing for abled people. <laughs> like it's just, we only see it as an accommodation when it's not like part of the abled framework, but like everyone is accommodated all the time. It's just like, uh, we just aren't accommodated. <laughs> and so we need it. Like, but it's, it's just cause that's been taken away from us. But like, but I, yeah, so I I struggle with the kind of like needing how much do you prove that you deserve this deserve access versus mm-hmm. like proving that you don't like that you don't have to prove anything, you know. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. but 
but yeah i think that like i think they're both i think we both have good i think there is a, a bit of good like helpfulness to both of those annoying things that we mm-hmm. deal with of like needing to prove that we need that we deserve help and needing to prove that we can accomplish things both of those have it, i think they come with a good orientation but we just shouldn't have to prove that you know <laughs> <laughs> i think this is a documentary that i'm gonna be uh but would love to show to my parents. I mean, I, I posted the link on Facebook. I need to repost it on our actual page, but I did post the link on Facebook. And I'm, I'm really hoping that it, uh, a couple of people that liked it, I'm really hoping that they go and check it out. Because um, this is this is something that uh, that absolutely should be seen and yeah. experienced. And it's it, it was it was or amazing. Or or not seen. True. True. Or heard. Yeah. Uh, it was it was amazing. It's it was it was incredible. And I'm. I am so glad. Uh, I'm so glad you picked this one because I never would have found it. Yeah, I'm pretty good at finding the hidden <laughs> yeah. gems. Yeah, you are. <laughs> it's a blind, blind superpower. Um, I can't breathe, so I'm not climbing Mount Everest, but I can find <laughs> hidden documentaries um, from 2006. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, do we want to do our blind security test? Yes, I feel like we're please. transitioning into that. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, do you, I'll go first. Go for it. Um, okay, so I am going to give this movie, I'm going to give it a 2300. Nice. Um, I think that because we are following, so like the adults are blind and the kids are blind, seeing that dynamic and the just that kind of like a community of supported blind people working together is always going to probably have to exceed legal blindness for me because Mm -hmm. just that is like you know high marks um for me i really did i think as much as i didn't always agree with eric i think it was very interesting to see both of their perspectives like um and how they would clash and like because I think also kind of hearing where Eric came from helped me a little bit to like understand those inclinations as well. So I think it kind of like, you know, gave more of like, a, I mean, you know, just more justification and emotional understanding of where this was coming from, even if ultimately I, you know, I still like, you know, have a different viewpoint. But like um, just the fact that they also like that these kids were just so set up to fail and then we're we're being blamed for being set up to fail basically um and to be able to like have the opportunity to like not be set up to fail and to be given just given a chance to do stuff at all um you know that was really really great to see i think um I think that, yeah, there is, like, the, I think the inspirational stuff that you were talking about did not go, like, that, maybe that's just a center in my, that I don't have a receptor for that, like, um, (laughs) that whole thing at all, because I was just, like, worried about the kid's safety, and that was the entire thing. I did not, I had a lot of trouble, like, feeling, like, uh, excitement, like, it's just, like, occasionally I would have, like, a second of, like, oh, it's kind of cool that they're doing this, and then I would just instantly be like, no, they're gonna get hurt. Um, (laughs) So that, I think, maybe it's just a weird thing that, with me, Um, but I think, like, I I think just getting to see the school, for me, was what what really was the high, made it the high marks. Um, I think if we had seen the school, and I didn't see the mountain climbing, I don't, I mean, I might have even enjoyed it a little bit more, (laughs) like, because that was really the heart of it for me. Um, But I don't think it, like, was bad mountain climbing. I was just scared for them. Um, (laughs) um, I Yeah, I think that it was also, as a documentary, I thought it was really well, like, done edited I there was some sound issues which I have no idea how much of that was like the it could have been like processing I mean I actually rented on Amazon so you would think they would have like 
Well, you know, they, they sync it up. They but... had to they had to lug all those cameras up the mountain. Right. So, well, that's yes. what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, and, and I think that a lot of the like sync issues were happening when they were high in the mountain. So I'm like, I'm gonna give them a pass for that because like it's you know there's only so much you can haul when it comes to like equipment. Um, and it was 2006, so you know it was still very like. 2006 digital Mm -hmm. camera (laughs) vibes Mm -hmm. um uh, which but i i thought that it like the editing was really well done and how we saw the different like the backstories of each kid and got like a window into them as we were going up the mountain like it felt very put together um in a very cohesive way and it made it very engaging to kind of get yeah get a window into everyone's life but I think also just the fact that it kind of unraveled as we went I also really liked because I think sometimes when you front load it too much with information that can get like you're like but they're going they're going to climb a mountain so when is that starting but I think they did a really good job of like pacing and and like not spending too much time when they I'm sure they had so much footage and so like I feel like they were really like selective on like what what pushed the story forward um and just like from an editing point of view it was I was like oh this is real real good editing because editing a documentary is hella hard like you just have so much fucking footage (laughs) and so I think for me that definitely made me enjoy it more when I see someone who's like yes you got it you got it guys so (laughs) um but that's my my little editor corner Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but I think yeah so overall I I really liked it and um yeah, I think I think like mountain climbing is not for me, but um, but I really do love getting to see kids with uh, blind kids just fucking doing shit is is really fun. Um, yeah. How about you? What's your blindness cutie? Yeah, so I'm I'm sitting at a uh, twenty four hundred today actually. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I this movie is this movie's amazing. I think this might be. This is the one that that we've watched so far that I am the most eager to get out there and to show people. This is this is the one that if I have, you know, this is the one I want to show my other blind friends. This is the one I want to show my parents. This is the one I want to show anybody who's like, "Oh, blind people, mer, you know, cuz like no, 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 no. We blind people are amazing and we are doing everything that you're doing and we're doing it well and we're doing it um we're doing it the way we have to do it. We're we're adapting it what we're adapting what needs to be adapting and then we're doing it right that is kind of cool i didn't even think about that yeah yeah (laughs) yeah no i i wish that uh i could have seen this in well i I had already been out of high school so that but you know i wish i would have watched this further back in in college even it was like 13 years ago that it's been out too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's this is just it was amazing it was it's amazing filmmaking yeah i I agree about the editing i thought the editing was done uh, really well and i liked learning more about the kids as they climbed the mountain. I think that was good because it kind of it kind of went back and forth from the monotony of just climb, climb, right, climb, right. climb, climb. And then all of a sudden, boop. There were a few points where I got a little confused, especially during Tashi's story because now we're in China. And I was like, hang on, are we... You're right. That was we one before point. or after? Because I couldn't... But then I... I then I'm like, okay, we're doing this for everybody, so now it makes more sense. But that, that's literally that is my only quibble with the movie is I think that was a weird editing choice. But except yeah, for honestly, fair. yeah, honestly, except for that, this is an, an amazing story about an amazing group of kids who go on to do really, awesome really awesome stuff. Yeah, and who are wonderful, amazing blind people and are just you know living. Yeah, <laughs> they're just living their lives, and that's super cool. And yeah, just to get to see all these, get to meet all these new people and kind of just hang out with them for a couple hours was uh, was amazing. Oh, it was super, yeah, it was super fun. So, yeah, uh, I would say 2400, solid. Nice. Would, would recommend. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I would maybe... Rec- I never recommend movies to people, so I don't <laughs> even know. I mean, I'm, I think that this is a good movie to watch, literally, so... I'm, I'm, I agree with that definitely. Um, though I'm like, you should if you want to know how blind people are capable, just fucking know me. Like you don't need any movie <laughs> yes, to know just that. Talk, just talk to us. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll tell you. We'll tell you everything we, you need to know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You sh- it's yeah. It's um uh, there. But I another thing when you were talking that I thought about was like I love how the kids go on to do stuff that isn't even like rock life. Like that. That's just like right, you know right. they just 
they're just one of them talented one of, kids. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> one of them ends up running the school. Two of them open a massage massage parlor. One of them runs a braille press. And it's you gonna, know it's, the only braille press in Tibet. Right. Yeah. Which it is really cool. And it, and I also like that. Like I like when kids get the opportunity to do like cool stuff that's like you know might be really life changing in some ways, but it doesn't. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to like then go do that thing. You know, like that you can get as a kid. You have a different, um, you have a little bit less fear, like, <laughs> neurologically. <laughs> you're, so well, I think you're, they get you're a, to do that stuff. You're a kid or a teenager. You think you're invincible. Right, exactly. Like, you literally do. It's scientifically proven. So, like, <laughs> I think that that is, it's always cool to get to see kids who then use that to go do scary stuff that as an adult, because, I mean, like, honestly, I'm probably more likely to say no to that than I would have been if I was their age. Like, I think if I was their age, I'd be much more likely to want to do it. So, so I think it's just cool when kids get an opportunity at that age too as much as I'm like oh my god they're gonna die it's also really cool for them to have that and and then to get to just do lots of cool stuff that doesn't you know and this is just one of their many experiences in their life which is pretty dope yeah that's so that's blind sight mm -hmm. I don't why is it called that I couldn't figure it out it's like really has nothing to do with the movie other than that they're blind I know Miss S says this is their this is the real blind summit and I'm like mm, should have called the documentary blind summit definitely okay. a better name and you know, like mm -hmm. and also just like yeah easier to more distinctive like it's like blind yeah. sight is right. I don't know but oh this movie obviously you rented it off Amazon it's yes. it's it is rentable off of Amazon it's also streaming on Vimeo uh at, well as of mon um as a Wednesday at least because that's when I watched this. But it's uh, streaming on Vimeo for free. As of two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. I'll translate. Um, <laughs> oh, God. You're right. Yeah. Um, Sorry. As, yeah. As of two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think um, I, I mean, I imagine it's probably not going. Wouldn't that be so bizarre if like just right after we did this recording that they took it down for some yeah, reason? No, it's um, it's it's been up. It's been up for quite some time now. Yeah, it's so got over it. it's got over 200,000 views. So, nice. Yeah. yeah. So check that out on, on Vimeo for you want to pay for it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is a good segue into our next segment. Mm -hmm. What are we doing next week, Melissa? Okay, so next week it's my pick. And yes. I'm, I've chosen a movie that I... It's been on my need to get around to seeing list for so long. And so finally we're going to watch it. And I'm super excited. It's a film by Yorgos Lanthimos. We're watching The Lobster yeah, next week. Which is also a movie I've meant to watch since it came out. And also I've been watched. So <laughs> good. The, we're yeah, going to both be super disappointed next week. So too good <laughs> for that now. <laughs> we're, we're checking we're checking this movie off, our, off of our boxes. But uh, yes. yeah, if you don't recognize the name Yorgos Lanthimos, he's... Well, obviously the director of The Lobster, but he's also the director of The Favorite and Dogtooth. Uh, and The Lobster is streaming on Netflix if you want to watch along with us and streaming on Canopy yeah. if you have a library card. So very great. Um, and I think there's a third one. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, I mean, obviously you can you can rent it from Amazon and iTunes. And yeah, you can. Oh, it's also on Hoopla. Oh, it, oh, it's on Hoopla, too. It's on Groovy. Canopy, Hoopla, and Netflix. So. Oh, excellent. Why pay for it when you can watch it on those? Yeah. Um. Awesome! I'm excited to me too to talk about it and to see it. Yay! Um, and then we're, our last thing is uh the what we're what we're loving that yes. we never figured out what it's called. Whatever we'll do it later. What, what we're loving? <laughs> it's too hot to figure it out now. <laughs> um, this has been a mountain climb of an episode because it is just getting hotter and hotter as we record. Um. But yeah, I mean, I, mean, I wasn't I wasn't going to say anything, but oof. it's very hot. <laughs> it's and pretty like, hot. I mean, yeah, if you could, I wish people could handle or anyone would handle a podcast, which is a very loud noise. My air conditioning is so loud. So it's just <laughs> impossible to record. But anyway, you go first. Me? What is your okay. pick? So because we've talked about a documentary that uh, is all about safety first, obviously, and everybody <laughs> being safe and nobody dying. I wanted to bring a documentary that is the exact opposite of that. <laughs> so this is completely watched this on a whim, had no idea it even existed. But when I was coming home last week after our recording session, I happened to be scrolling through. I think I got a notification from HBO that, uh, oh, a new episode of Infinity Train was out because the season is ending, basically. So I wanted to watch that. And I flipped to the home page of HBO and there was an ad for something called Class Action Park. 
Oh, yeah. And this is a documentary about the famed theme park in New Jersey known as Action Park. And it's crazy, insane owner, uh, Gene Maldonado, and all of these. The park basically... He put all he put all his money into this park. It was it was this water park on one side of this a, a freeway went right through this amusement park. So on one side you have a water park and one side you have a motor park. And this documentary tells the story of the conception and craziness that was Action Park and the just how absolutely ballsy and batshit insane <laughs> you had to be to work at the park and to visit the park. On a regular basis because people were getting just maimed <gasps> on the reg at this park. Oh, my God. I mean, it was a daily occurrence, you know, because these rides were designed <gasps> poorly. Oh, wow. Well. And um, That sounds like a fun documentary. It's a, it, it is a really fun documentary. I will caution. Um, it, it is a very fun documentary. But uh, there are there are a couple of people who lost their lives at Action Park, uh, unfortunately. And the documentary covers them, and, and rightly so. So there's a bit of a really weird tonal shift, <laughs> but um, it's I'm so interested in, in theme parks and the theme park industry. And I'd heard about this park on YouTube and stuff. Uh, so getting to see a, just a full fledged documentary d- directed by uh, someone who worked at the park, I believe. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. So it's that it's sounds fun. really fascinating. Yeah, it's really fun. And that's it's class action. Uh, yeah. Class action park. And it's streaming on HBO Max. I saw that and I was like, I'm going to have to watch that at you some point. You really but I should watch yet, it. <laughs> but I will. Um, yeah, that, well, I'm excited. I'm going to do that. Um, my thing uh, this week is um, a very weird thing. Um, but I was just like, this is a fun, this is a happy thing that happened to me. Or that I got this week. Um, a few weeks ago, I went to the DMV. So... Super fun. Um, And you're alive. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was actually, I like, weirdly enough, the person, like, who was in the, um, who was going to the the window next to the window I was at uh, was also a blind person. Super weird. Oh, very cool. Wow. You know, DMV is not really where you expect to, like, all the (laughs) blind people to hang out. Yeah, but no, secretly all the blind people hang out at the DMV. We do, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, no one expects us there. So it's kind of like Mount Everest, really, in a way. (laughs) Um, But but the thing was not just that I went to the DMV. Um, It was that I decided, because we live in the state of Oregon, um, to get my license, license. Wow, what a, it's so hot. I don't know what uh, my... I continue. I have a really good DMV story. Please okay. Con- please, please continue. I um, definitely want to hear either the shortened version of it or hear it That's... off mic. So yeah, yeah. We can sure, sure. up there conditioning, yeah, yeah. but we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but uh, it, I wanted to get a new uh, state ID. That is what they're actually called um, when you're a blind person. Uh because in Oregon, you can get one with your, it says sex, it really should be gender, but marked as an X as opposed to like being male or female. Oh, yeah. So um, that is definitely far more in accordance with my actual identity. Um, and so when I realized you could get it, I read an article in Oregon about someone talking about how it's one of the states where you can actually do that. I think it's like the state, weirdly enough. Um, well, which is kind of sad, but I'm not 100% sure. So look into it um but i know you can do it in oregon which is the important part but um i yeah i I read an article and was like oh i need to do that that's that is so cool that you can do that here um because yeah my auntie always said something that's not right and so now i can make it right um and i guess also if you are hearing this in oregon um i I did it because I've read it that in, in an article you could. So this is me doing the same thing that if you are in, in Oregon and don't identify as male or female, um, that you can go and get it, your ID to actually reflect your gender. So congratulations. Thank you. Very excited. Um, do you have, because I do want to hear your DMV story. Yeah. Can it be shortened? It is very short. Okay. Yes. Um, awesome. <laughs> yes. So I actually also, this is in Alaska. I went to the DMV in, in Alaska to get a state ID because that's what you do. And my vision teacher went with me and we were sitting in the waiting room and we were bored, you know, because it's the DMV. And we, our number finally got called and we stood up and she pulled me aside and she's like, hey, hey, tell her that you're here to get a driver's license. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not going to. She's like, do it, do it. Tell her you're going to get a driver's license. Okay. 
Okay, so I walked up to the window and presented my uh, my paperwork, and she says, "Oh, what can I do for you?" And I said, "Yep, I'm hi. I'm here to get a driver's license." And without missing the beat, she hands me the paperwork for a driver's license, and um, I can I can do the written test fine. That's not a problem. Uh, obviously, I uh, failed the vision test hard, <laughs> hardcore, and. You went through all of that <laughs> squinting like at the test. It was so stupid. And then uh, I I walked back. I I finally at at the vision vision test. I was like, I you know what? I'm 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 actually here to get a state ID. And she's like, <laughs> I figured. And I was like, Why didn't you stop me? She said, Well, we're not allowed to discriminate. So <gasps> so you so asked funny. you asked for a driver's license. We're not allowed to discriminate. We're, I yeah. love how that's like. I mean, technically, that it's exactly the same as, like, it's discrimination that if you're not letting blind people drive, technically. I mean, you're ki- by that definition that it's discrimination blind people can't drive. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. She, I'm, I'm like, you saw my cane. And she's like, I know, we're not allowed to discriminate. <laughs> that doesn't make any uh, sense. So we, uh, we all had a really good laugh. And I got my state ID, my first state ID. That's... Awesome. Also, our the particular DMV we went to kind of looked like a weird modern space station, and I pretended that we were in like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So that's that is that's how I passed more my time. fun than a normal DMV experience. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandfather had a similar, non completely not anything to do with the DMV, but like um, when going in World War Two for the doing the army thing, the I guess like. Fi- physical fitness the entire test like he got through and then they got to the the eye chart and they were like read the first line on the chart and he was like what chart and then they're like you can't be in the yep. army oh. <laughs> oh no so very similar story um mm-hmm. yeah that's i did that but it was 15 years of my life and then eventually <laughs> Um, anyway, um, on that note, um, I think we did a podcast tune in next <laughs> week for The Lobster. You can um, watch it on Canopy, Netflix, Hoopla. So you got some options there. Um, and we will we'll do that next week. Uh, our theme song was written by Lucia Fasano. Our YouTube channel where um, there's closed, if you turn on the closed captions, you can uh, read a transcript of what we're saying is at Citizen White Cane Podcast on YouTube. Uh, our Twitter is White Cane Pod. Our Instagram is Citizen White Cane. And our Facebook is Citizen White Cane. You can send us an email to CitizenWhiteCanePod at gmail.com. Um, and if you'd like to leave us a voice message, there's a link in the show notes um have you climbed mount everest or just any mountain in general it doesn't even have to be a mountain a hill with yeah. a name did you climb one of those only if it has a name if it doesn't yeah, have a name gotta, we don't care it's gotta have a name yeah yeah that's important <laughs> if, it's, if it doesn't have a name it doesn't count <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um have you um like represented all blind people um and what blind people are capable of doing in some scenario <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you do you like the song uh, "So Happy Together"? <laughs> yes, which I I cut out for the title for the end of this episode as the clip, so you're about to hear them yes, sing again. So. I, I'm, that was going to be my suggestion of the clip. Yeah, it's great, so it's so cute. Great minds think alike. <laughs> well, enjoy that singing. Come back next week for Lobster. We'll see you then. Bye. Right, well, we'll blind you then. Oh right. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> So happy together. How is the weather? We happy together.